Hey there everybody, I'm Joe, also known as Mural Joe, and this is a mural that I'm working on, this big painting behind me. I'm on the job site right now, and this picture has no significance in this video. It's just that this was the quietest place I had available to shoot this video, but I do love to show off, and so while I'm here, I want to show you what I've been working on. So we've got our dancing tree people there under a under a pretty sunset sky, a guitar player, got a saxophone back there in the middle, and our dancing girl tree. So this is a fun one. I'm really excited to get this one up on my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get to the point, which is my job to do, because I am a YouTuber, and you've only got a few seconds to hold anybody's attention. YouTube started, I think, in 2005, and so then 2010, I started realizing that how-to videos were really catching on and I said hey I know how to do something and I think it would be fun to have a video on the internet and so I posted my first how to paint clouds video it consistently grew in popularity now it didn't happen quickly you know we had 10 views and then the next day I, you know I'm looking at it I've got 15 views real slow and then I started getting subscribers and I thought, wow, people are subscribing to me. But again, it happened slowly and gradually. And so I am coming to you from a perspective of a very gradual building of a YouTube channel, uh, unlike uh, some others that have uh, been very popular uh, and trendy and really exploded quickly in popularity. So there are many different experiences and I'm only offering you uh, mine and my perspective on building this as something meant for long-term sustainability. So my business has multiple parts. YouTube is where I collect the most traffic, which drives people, invites them to purchase my instructional content. And so then the how-to part of the business was developed when I realized, hey, I could sell these how-to videos because people really liked the one I posted on YouTube. Now, my favorite part of this job is that moment when I post a video and I see comments saying, thank you for posting this. I mean, I just get such a big high from that deep sense of purpose. I helped somebody. I feel like I really helped solve someone's problem. They were struggling just like I was struggling. They were trying to figure out how in the world do I get this picture in my painting, have this rock in my painting to look like it's reflecting something. Or how do I get this water to look like water? And I'm able to answer that question and give a practical workflow in order to arrive at the desired goal. And then people say thank you and I get a huge rush from that. That is so satisfying. My least favorite part, advertising. I don't like advertising as a whole. I don't like being a salesman, I don't like advertising my own stuff, and I don't like most of the commercials I see other advertisers using. I think that there's a huge number of the population that is willing to be very dishonest in order to make a profit, and so we see a lot of that in advertising. Of course you've experienced that. Now, this is not the typical college education job. I do very much value higher education but i found that in this uh in this industry of trying to make videos that hold people's attention give them something that they want to come back to understanding what people like what you are to others is the most valuable uh, skill set i i uh, would have said years ago oh well i need to be a skilled artist but now I believe that that is false. I've seen enough YouTube channels that have passed mine because the person hosting the content is so good at engaging the audience. So I'm constantly trying to understand how I come across to you in order to be better and more pleasant. And honestly, I think it's made me a more pleasant person in all of life. It is not likely that you understand how you are to others. That's something that only comes with very intentional observation of your own behavior. And you get to see that when you watch yourself on video or if you read books or if you listen to advice, many ways to collect that wisdom. but. It doesn't come naturally, so don't think that you know 
how you're coming across to others until you have carefully scrutinized uh, yourself looking back at your videos your content so when you feel like you really might have something that could become a YouTube channel there is a negative stigma that uh, comes with that probably mostly from generations that came before YouTube because it really looks like you've got these impractical dreams of being an internet sensation when that's like winning a lottery you know so there I am sitting at a computer back in 2010 2011 after I started posting videos I'm not making any money I just believe hey someone liked this and then more people liked it if we could continue that pattern I might have a lot of people like this and then start making money on advertising royalties on YouTube I mean I I had it in my mind but I I want to share with you that I had a choice to be resentful of my friends and family for not seeing it right away that this was worth it's not that they didn't see that I had talent they're just thinking Joe you're sitting at a computer for long hours the family needs you present and you've got nothing to show for it come on and so it was my job to prove it. I had a choice to be resentful and say, uh, you're gonna see, when I get this figured out, you're gonna be sorry that you doubted me ever, which I believe is a really wrong attitude because we all need to understand that it's very human to experience doubt. And this is, this is how we survive and keep ourselves Got something in my teeth. <laughs> and keep ourselves from making big mistakes and so you have to empathize with people who are experiencing doubt and you have to make yourself the giver of hope and so this is self-advocacy I had to tell uh, the people who are looking at me my my wife my kids my family I have to say hey this is gonna work this is why it's gonna work and I have to show in in my body language in my tone of voice without being overly defensive or rude I I have to be a giver of hope and so this I think is the most important form of self-advocacy and I also had to understand that this is something that has a time limit I recommend very much working hard on trying to make a YouTube channel that's awesome put all of your energy into trying to do it well put research into it think about what people want to see what can you offer that others are not offering but give yourself a time limit you know or or just don't keep going down the same road forever when you're not seeing change I understand the value of not giving up but it is important to understand that you've got so much energy to spend and you need to start seeing results within a certain amount of time if something is going to be worth a longer investment of time so I just had you know I, I had a time window I was like well I know that in the next few years you know this is what's going to be happening in our life and, and, and if I can get something good to happen by this time then it's gonna work out all right I, I had a I had a time window in my mind and man I am so thankful thank God that it did work out and I remember the first time is there's like four or five hundred dollars uh, coming in it was a very gradual change where my wife and I were we're uh, talking about finances and it's like oh five hundred dollars came in from YouTube this time it wasn't a big celebration moment because it didn't just all of a sudden happen it just gradually got a little bit more a little bit more it's kind of like you know you're cranking away at a machine you're building a machine and it's like it's not working yet keep in here we got to hold this part here and we got to crank this we got to do this. and it takes all this management in order to get this machine to work and then there's a certain point where it starts to run a little smoother and then a little bit better and you start to back up and you say can I let go is it running itself can I let go and then finally you just cautiously take your hands off and you realize I think it's working I think it's working it's not doing much but it's working and there was a moment like that where suddenly I'm evaluating how I'm gonna invest my energy in my future and I'm realizing 
it's working. I'm, I'm gonna put more energy into this YouTube channel because this is gonna be used to do this and this and this because I had, I had that baby machine. One of my favorite proverbs is, do not despise small beginnings. I put a ton of research into getting answers for people that had questions and that was when I really had something, had content for a YouTube channel and, and it dramatically improved the look, the quality of my work. Learning so that I could teach and it was so much a science, a discipline of asking a question and finding the answer in a way that could be written into a computer program. It's, it's that defined. It's not just an intuitive uh, process that's done by feel by a, an artist that has a special ability. Nobody was there in, in those moments when, when I'm you know squeezing my forehead because I'm so stressed, I'm, I'm crying, I'm, I'm feeling uh, you know so discouraged in, in moments that I need an answer and it's not coming. I'm missing deadlines, things are going wrong. It, you know, there, there were moments of just very hard work and, and uh, I seemed to be the only one that understood the importance of not just having a good result. I can't just, just whip out something and say, okay, that, that looks good, just leave well enough alone, go away, the job's done, and then you can go, no, my job, is to find answers. If, if there's something people don't realize, that's probably the most of it, just how important it has always been to me to put a lot of energy into finding good answers that anyone can understand if they really want to. If I was starting out again, high school, and, and uh, you know, you get out of high school and you are suddenly realizing that this is go time. You got to find a way to pay your own bills. You don't want to just keep on living with uh, mom and dad or, or whoever you live with. And you know, it's an exciting thing to be able to have financial independence. And, and so I remember those days just thinking about money, money, money. I wish that I would have understood how important it is to be pleasant. There are so many people that have money and are ready to give it out to people they like. And so you're not going to get told that the reason you're not getting called for a job or the reason you're not getting hired is because you're just not pleasant. People aren't going to tell you that unless you have like a really brave friend that breaks the news to you someday. It's your job to uh, discover that and it's your job to change it. And so I wish that I would have known that at, at that young age because I believe I could have impressed those who really wanted to invest in me. And then they would have said, hey, this guy's ready. He is, he is uh, worthy of this investment because I can see that he's gonna take it to a good place. People really do like to see their money go to help people. And uh, there, are, there are many uh, in this town that want to support local business, small business, startups. But if you're not likable and you don't seem like you're trustworthy to go in a good direction, then people are, are not just going to say, oh yeah, sure, I'll dump my money into what you're selling. <laughs> don't try to trick people into buying your stuff. Just be likable. It's just very simple. I know people who are working jobs that normally require paperwork showing that they have a degree from college, but because they impressed their uh, authorities, their employers, with their knowledge and with their, their people skills, their likability, because they, they were so impressive, they were put in that position and the company was willing to risk the, the uh, non-existence of paperwork, education, credentials, because the character of the person was, was good. So understanding the power of being a confident person and a, a uh, self-motivated learner. It is scary the way you get over that fear is by understanding that everybody is 
just waking up in this world and trying to figure out what to do. There is an illusion of people all around you that have it together. Everybody is living a life that has tons of questions and doubts. It's everybody. So it's valuable just to understand, convince yourself of that because it is true. And then you feel less alone when you're having those feelings. You know, you can just look at the person that's nearest you and say, well, I know that they're feeling that too. And so I'm just gonna muscle through this. People look at convincing words and confidence because that's, that's what's present, that's what's here now. And, and that, will, uh, that will be more present. It will trump the details of of background skills so the more you're able to just have that discipline then the the more you get to the part where you gain some skills you learn some new things and then confidence grows so I think the most helpful advice that I can give to wrap up this this video is don't underestimate the power of your diligent research and investment of time look for that thing that you can focus on for a solid eight hours a day. For me, it was creative artwork. And so when you find something that you can put that much mental energy into without being completely exhausted, you know what it's like doing something that you're not really made for, something you're not meant to do. Me, for instance, if I have to do, I don't know, bookkeeping, accounting, and I'm looking at columns and rows in a grid, Oh man, a couple hours into it, I'm thinking, I need a break. Well, that's a good indicator that that is not what I am meant to be doing with the, uh, my energy. I'm just not made for that. But if you can find that thing that you can really focus on, I believe that that is where talent is found, it is not in the outward performance, but in that ability to just stick with the problem for a lot longer and more energy than others are able to stick with it. Because the people that find the answers are the ones that are just staring at the problem for the longest. Get out there, try your ideas, don't be stubborn. When they don't work, come back with a different plan. Use trial and error because you're staring at a problem that you were meant to solve. And there's no formula out there to be you. There are formulas, to do things but if you can find the best way to be you then I think that is the very best formula all right I'm gonna make that my final thought and wish you uh, lots of happiness and success and I'll see you next time